What's cracking? Dylan here from DIY Overdrive. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a McTuning switch panel. And this one, if you're here for the review, I'll give it to you right now. We absolutely love this panel. It's super affordable. It even came with this sweet remote control where you can adjust individually, turn it all on and off, turn them individually on and off. Very cool. And also, you can even customize the backlit colors here with this RGB button. You got all kinds of different settings that you can click through different brightnesses and of course you can control it from right here as well as with the wireless remote this switch panel is pretty easy to set up it comes with everything you need in the box for a simple setup sometimes though there is more to it than just what comes in the box so I'm showing you how I integrated this switch panel into our auxiliary power system on our 2015 transit van and also this is only a piece of a much longer video that's already released uh, that shows every step-by-step -step aspect of what it took to build the auxiliary power system so keep an eye out for that in the description below with that let's jump right in of course, the first step in any install is going to be unboxing the product itself. And in the box, you'll find the label, switch panel, the fuse box, breaker, some cables, which I didn't use because I needed, I needed longer cables, the remote, and some mounts. Now, the mounts for the switch panel are easy to put together. I didn't end up using the mounts for the fuse box itself, but you can take a look at the manual to see exactly how that part of the mounting system goes together. It's not required it all just depends on how you're going to be using it i want to give a big thank you to mctuning again for sending this over to us we absolutely love it pick yours up in the link below on amazon after i unbox it all i grab the switched panel itself and its mount and then take it over to the van to start installing and figuring out exactly where it's going to go this plastic shelf up here is dual layer plastic. So I just used a couple self tapper screws to secure the switch panel to the plastic. And knowing that it's dual layer, I was sure that the screw was not gonna poke through the bottom. Took me a couple different tries with different tools to figure out exactly what I could use to get this in there. I ended up just using a short screwdriver. It pushed into the plastic pretty easy. If you do something similar, putting self tappers straight into plastic, just make sure you don't over tighten them so you don't strip out the plastic. At the time of making this video, we are about two months into using this panel regularly and it is still holding very strong. You can see here that I actually started the split loom on this cable off of the camera. And uh, the reason I did that is because it's going to have to pass through that plastic down by the windshield at the end of the shelf. And so it's just another precaution to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to protect the wire. Depending on how and where you mount your switch panel and the fuse box for the switch panel, now would be a good time to decide if you're going to use the ACC switched mode on the fuse panel. What this means is, do you want to have full-time power to the system where you can switch on any of the accessories on the switches at any point in time? Or, and this is more important if you're going to run the power off of a starter battery instead of an auxiliary battery, do you want to have the system be disabled while the engine is not running and charging the batteries? When I'm doing an install in a vehicle that has an auxiliary power system, like in our van, then I like to have full-time power ability to the McTuning switch panel. On this build, I did need ACC switching abilities on other things, so I'll show you how I hooked up and ran an ACC controlled wire now. Now I'm accessing the fuse panel under the steering wheel in our Ford Transit. And what I just did with that wire that I measured out and cut was crimp it onto a fuse tap because this is the wire that is going to control or switch on and off the ACC or accessory controlled fuse that I'm going to install in the battery box. This is what will be switching anything in the box that I want connected and powered only when the engine is on. To ensure that this is working correctly, what I do is after I put the fuse tap in, I grab my multimeter and simply test when the engine is off, and then I switch the vehicle on and test that wire again. You can see that I put the black wire up on a ground, and then I'm using the red wire or the positive 
on the yellow wire that I made to check the current. Once I know that that fuse tap is working correctly, it's time to run that wire up through the dash and through the body panels towards the back. If you're doing this in a Ford Transit, you can see that really I'm just kind of tugging on a few things and it comes off pretty easily. For whatever vehicle that you're doing this on, it's a good idea to look up exactly how to remove the body panels or the trim correctly. Also, as you're doing this, make sure that wherever you're running the wire, there's nothing that's going to crimp or cut or put pressure, pinpointed pressure on the wire to ensure longevity. I'm only running this yellow ACC wire a short distance over the door to where it will meet up with and join the switch panel wire in the split loom. I always put my wires in a split loom to make sure they not only look good, but are protected on the entire journey back to the battery box. At the point where the McTuning switch panel wire meets up with the yellow fused wire, I start putting them both together into that split loom all the way down the line. This was honestly far more tedious than I was expecting. I don't usually use the smaller sized split loom and it was really tight and um, like I said, tedious. Took some time to get it in there, but I got it. I still remember my first time drilling a hole in a vehicle. It is not as scary as you think. Just think about where you're putting wires and any holes that you drill for a pass through, like what I'm doing right now, make sure you use a rubber grommet to protect the wire that passes through it. Here, I'm just using a cheap step bit from Amazon, and then I coat it with some ultra black because I didn't really feel like using paint here, but as long as you coat the bare metal after you do any cutting or drilling, you'll be safe from rust. After installing the grommet, send the wire down. This portion is somewhat irrelevant to the topic of this video because I am joining that small split loom with the switch panel wire and the ACC wire into a larger split loom that has the main cables that runs from the vehicle to the battery box. These are the cables that will run to the charger for my entire auxiliary power system. So that's why I'm showing this footage here, but the idea is just that you wanna get those wires to your auxiliary power or to your starter battery battery in a safe and thoughtful way. So again, using split loom and being careful that I'm not running it against any sharp or jagged edges on the way to its final destination. Another consideration that you'll have to make is how you're going to run your accessory wires to the switch panel. And like I said earlier, this is only a piece of the puzzle in a larger video that was over an hour long where I build and install an entire auxiliary power system for our van that powers and switches and does all kinds of things. I'll show you a couple of the clips now where I drilled a hole in the roof and hooked up some of the wires, ran them down through the roof and to that auxiliary power system box. But if you want this in greater detail with step-by-step -step every single piece and step that you need to do a system like this, then please check out my full length auxiliary power system video. Here I'm showing just a couple clips of building my auxiliary box that's going to house the batteries, chargers, the McTuning switch box, everything. So this comes right back to a decision that you'll have to make before beginning this install. Are you going to power the McTuning with an auxiliary battery, auxiliary power system, or power it with the OEM starter battery on your vehicle. And if you do power it with the starter battery, there's nothing really wrong with that. You'll just wanna make sure you take precautions like using the ACC switched wire from a fuse tap like I showed you earlier to prevent damaging or overdrawing from your OEM starter battery. Again, I go through the entire process of the auxiliary power system in a much longer and more in-depth video, but for now let's stay on topic with the McTuning switch panel setup. As I mentioned, you have the option of powering your McTuning switch panel with an auxiliary battery or the starter battery. It just so happens that on a transit van, there is a consumer access point with a 60 amp fused stud right on the side of the driver's seat, which makes it very easy to hook something like this up if you're not going to be using an auxiliary power system. So I used this port for my auxiliary power box and charger, so that's why I've got this footage here, but you could just as easily use this to power the fuse box for the McTuning panel. If you are going to be using this access point like on a transit van, then you can absolutely build a small box for the McTuning and install it 
right behind the driver's seat and use the included wires for powering the system. Another way that I have done this in the past is by putting the fuse box in the engine bay of the vehicle and mounting it directly to the top of something like the OEM fuse box or right into the side sheet metal of the engine bay. If you're going to be running any sort of distance, then check out an online 12 volt wire size calculator that will help you determine what size wire you need to run the distance that you need to go. So the longer the distance, the larger the wire that you're going to need. With my box finished and installed, I'm ready to mount my make tuning switch panel fuse box to the box and begin the wiring process. Something you want to think about is access for wires. You want to make sure that anything that you mount is going to have good access for wires without having to bend them or kink them or do anything that might harm them in any way. This red box, if you didn't know, and sorry to waste your time if you do already know, but this is what you call a bus bar. And this is not required at all in your install. If you are doing something a little more simple, then you could run the positive wire for the McTuning fuse box straight from the battery to the McTuning, of course, with a fuse or the included breaker being used and placed closer to the battery. In my situation, however, you'll notice that I'm routing the positive power for the McTuning through this bus bar, of course, with the power originating at the battery. The bus bar is just a great way to route cleanly instead of having a spiderweb mess of cables coming off of the battery itself. I do the same type of concept for the negative or ground wires for the entire system. I route them through bus bars. Whoa, quick break. I just wanted to say thank you all so much. For those of you who have made it this far into the video, I'm a small channel. And if you would take a moment to subscribe, like the video, that helps the algorithm a lot. Helps get my video to other viewers. And also, this McTuning system is in my affiliate links in the description below and is by far the best way you can support the channel if you would consider using my affiliate link. I just get a little cut and it helps keep the channel alive and helps make sure I can keep making these videos for you guys. So anyway, back to the video. Now we can move on to hooking up the McTuning fuse box. The first thing I'm doing here is routing the negative cable from the McTuning fuse box to an available stud on one of the negative bus bars. Next, I'm routing and setting up the antenna for the McTuning so that we can use the wireless controller while we're outside of the van if we happen to need to turn on the lights or do something. Uh, and don't feel like getting back in the van, we can just bring that remote control out with us, which is another very cool feature of the McTuning fuse panel. Something I learned from my training with Red Arc is a fuse is always going to be safer than a breaker, especially a cheap breaker. A fuse is going to break faster than a breaker, which prevents wires from being able to heat up and potentially cause a fire or something. So I am using, that said, I'm using a, a breaker here because they're kind of convenient. I'm on a budget, and like I said, there's a few things I'm doing different in this box that's different than normal or different than what I would do in a customer's vehicle because like I said I want to put my money where my mouth is and breakers are technically safe it's just fuses are more safe also this breaker came with the McTuning so I'm using it like I said earlier and this is a good example of it you want the fuse closer to the power source and for all of these peripherals the power source is going to technically be that red positive bus bar. So you can see how I've got that breaker very close to the bus bar. And then the longer cable is what is going to run from the breaker to the McTuning fuse panel. This is the point where I realized that McTuning switch panel cable, that is what controls the fuse panel, is inside that wire bundle and it would be a lot more efficient to be able to pull that wire out sooner instead of running it all the way around those chargers. So I'm undoing the zip ties simply so that I can pull that fuse panel wire or that switch panel wire out a little bit sooner instead of running it to the end. I also want to mention that the McTuning fuse panel has a switch on it where you can make this thing ACC switched to where if the engine's off, it simply will not power anything. Or you can have it where it's full-time power and you have the ability to turn it on at any point, which is what I opted for. I know that I'm good enough about shutting things off, turning off lights when we park somewhere and are going to be away from the van. If you feel like you would rather be safer, then I would say hook up a wire to the AC 
ACC controlled port and make sure you flip that switch so that when the engine's on, the McTuning works. When the engine's off, the McTuning shuts off automatically. Totally up to you. Here I'm hooking up the negative wire that came from the roof lights up above. Connecting accessory items like lights to the McTuning fuse box is very easy because they have these cool terminals that you simply unscrew to open up the access and then slide the wire in and screw it down to tighten it. Also want to note that there is a positive and negative access for each one of the channels on the McTuning. You do not need to use the negative port if you are running your negative cables to one of the negative bus bars that is all part of the system. If you do some research and decide that you want to do negative switching, maybe that's a reason to do it. But I always prefer to keep things cleaner, run fewer wires to the fuse box itself, and just run my negatives to the bus bars. Be sure to calculate the load for each of your accessories before you pick which fuse. This is essential for making sure that you are setting up a safe and reliable system. So for example, one of these positive cables that I'm hooking up right now is running to four of my roof lights. And those roof lights claim to be 50 watts each. So I'm doing 50 watt lights, four of them, so 50 times four, divided by 12. So that's going to be watts divided by volts is going to give me the amps. So that's going to be uh, almost 17 amps, which means I'm going to use a 20 amp fuse access on the McTuning unit. Now the McTuning is all hooked up and we can put that cover on. It was right around now that I realized if maybe I had planned a little more or a little different, I could have created somewhat of a false wall to hook some of these things up to and have the wires run behind them into another chamber, so to speak, because the wires, as you can see, can very, very quickly become messy and not that it's necessarily bad or dangerous, it's just kind of nice when things are clean looking and easy to trace and follow. Anyway, what I'm doing here is just zip tying some of the wire bundles together to help clean things up a little bit so it's not quite as chaotic. This might be a little bit different in your process, but what I'm currently doing is connecting the main fuse for the entire system that comes through the positive side of the battery bank to the battery itself. Again, this power flow is coming from the positive side of my parallel batteries through the main fuse and to that red positive bus bar that is going to power that McTuning and everything else in the system. And as I mentioned previously, you could absolutely run your McTuning power cable from the battery through a fuse or breaker and straight to the McTuning itself. So try not to be too intimidated by the mess of cable and gear that is in my battery box. Now I put both labeled and blank stickers on the McTuning switch panel to make sure I know exactly what is powering what. So I know exactly which channel is powering which light. I can always pull off the blanks later when it's time to add something new to the switch panel. And now the battery box is completed. Built the box, installed the accessories, hooked up all the wires. The charging is tested and working. Now it's ready to power our adventure to Canada that we left for just one week after this. I hope that helps you with setting up your own McTuning switch panel. And I also hope that you find your way down to the description to see the full length video of the auxiliary power system that I put in this van. Again, I can't get over how cool this remote is. It's, um, just so much value in an extremely affordable product. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Of course, uh, if you would please subscribe because that helps the channel a lot. And also I've got my affiliate links to this product in the description below. That is by far the best way to support the channel. And I wanna thank you all so much for those who do use my affiliate links. I just get a little cut and it helps keep the channel alive. So again, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.